Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here. My name is Christina campos Fiori and I'm the Program Officer at Research Libraries UK, a consortium of 39 research libraries across the UK and Republic of Ireland. Today, I will talk through the results of some international research that the UK has recently produced, exploring the development and delivery of virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces by research libraries internationally, as well as the academic, research and student perceptions and views of these services. The focus will be placed on the potential of these services to facilitate research and teaching and constitute a pathway to, collabor to collaboration between digital humanities researchers and library professionals. So we will start by defining what we mean by virtual reading rooms and teaching spaces. So what do we mean by a virtual reading room? So in essence, virtual reading rooms include the presentation of original archival, museum or special collections content by a visualizer, Zoom or an alternative, a member of search room staff engaged with the user remotely to position and reposition materials. They are bespoke research services and are staff time and expertise intensive, but to provide virtual access and the interpretation of materials, which do not depend on digitization. Virtual teaching spaces utilize the same technology and include the presentation of these materials to a larger group, either joining from a physical classroom or individually by Zoom, with a greater emphasis on pedagogy. So in total, our research reveals that 45 institutions have created or plan to create a virtual reading room and teaching service. So the institutions were geographically diverse. They were found in the UK, Republic of Ireland, Germany, Greece, Netherlands, USA, Australia and New Zealand. But we think that these numbers are just the very tip of the iceberg as there are many more uh, services elsewhere. So having outlined what the services are, how did they emerge and where did they come from? Although a number of the services did exist before COVID-19, the vast majority emerged in response to the pandemic and the experience of lockdowns, partial reopenings, and ongoing disruption of movement. Ireland UK has been trying the development of the services since late 2020 and has published three reports on the series of case studies on the Ireland UK website, as well as a VRR toolkit, which has been the result of an international release print symposium which took place in October 2022. Before focusing on the most uh, recent studies published in 2022, I will provide some context based on the results of the first study published in 2021, a time when research libraries started to slowly return to fiscal operations after the COVID-19 lockdowns. You can access the reports that have been already published through the QR code in this slide. So for the first, for, for the first survey, uh, so that uh, they had 32 institutions from the public of Ireland, UK, USA, Germany, the Netherlands, who either had or were planning to launch VRRs and DTSs. These were emerging services and they had started to appear across a variety of institutions, including major research libraries, museums and galleries, alongside smaller heritage and independent organisations. There was a mixed economy of approaches, which included the use of mobile or fixed visualisers, the creation of dedicated spaces and the location of staff. But for many, there was a low technical baseline, although some uh, were investing heavily. These were over overwhelmingly funded from within institutions, and although they initially were a pragmatic response to pressing challenge regarding access, they were becoming increasingly established as bespoke research services that offered another form of remote access to collections for both internal and external researchers. What was particularly interesting is that the services required staff to become more embedded within the research process as collaborators, enabling the exchange of ideas and knowledge between researcher and library staff. Time dedicated to PRS had also started to appear in research funding applications at the time. So building on the findings of this early research, RLUK launched the second international survey in November 2021. The aim was to document the most recent innovations in the development and delivery of virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces across the international research library and archives community. The survey was developed in collaboration with members of the International Alliance of Research Library Associations. We found that there were more institutions which had launched their services or were considering to launch this since the time of the first survey. The institutions offering or planning to offer VR sessions at the time of the survey included mainly research libraries based on higher education institutions, including several RLUK members and other collection holding organizations such as archives. So amongst the participants, we had institutions with developed VRRs, many of which were launched in late 2020 and 2021, and some with emerging services planning to launch these services in the immediate future. In some of the, of, the, of the graphs I have included in this presentation, you will be able to see the responses from those institutions with developed VRRs, which are in blue color, and those which seem to launch their services, which you can see in orange color. 
So in all institutions with established DRRs, and in the majority of those planning to establish DRRs, special and archival collections were most frequently consulted by the different audience groups or would be most readily available for users to consult. This agreed with the findings of the previous RLUK report published in 2021. Some of the institutions that were planning to develop their VRR consultation services aimed also to make available other types of collections, such as artifacts and objects, artworks, map collections, and non-special collections to reach different types of audiences, for example, uh, more isolated users. Thinking about the level of appetite for the services offered by institutions, this in many cases has remained stable as libraries and archives reopen their physical spaces. VRR services were considered valuable during the pandemic, and since then they have been proven particularly useful to external researchers who cannot visit in person, academic staff delivering virtual teaching sessions, as well as members of the public. So according to the survey findings, external academics and students were the main audience groups for institutions with developed virtual living room services. Several institutions in this group noted that community groups and members of the public were also regular users of their VRR services. Similarly, external academics and students, as well as community groups and the general public, are the target audience groups for institutions aiming to launch their VRR consultation services. Thinking about the most frequent users of VRR services in the participating institutions, they came mainly from the arts and humanities disciplines. Social sciences, academics and researchers were also making good use of the services, and only a small number of users from the STEM subjects were engaging uh, with VRRs. So thinking about the practical side of how institutions were connecting with their users through, through remote technologies, this was mostly done through Zoom or Microsoft Teams. As reported by institutions, most virtual visits were single-person visits and lasted for less than an hour. As our findings showed, the use of the VRR consultation services constituted a great opportunity to work with users and start developing a better understanding of their needs. So as part of building relationships with their users, some institutions have allowed researchers to run their own VRR sessions, most institutions either had consulted or were planning to consult with their user communities to develop and further improve their offering. And library staff were again found to be active participants in research by working closely with researchers and providing advice and support during VRR sessions. So next I will share uh, some of the results with regards to uh, virtual teaching space uh, services and their users. Based on the answers of the institutions which have or plan to launch data services, uh, these were most heavily used by academics in the broader arts and humanities area, as you can also see uh, through this graph. So when asked about whether the current uh, or planned uh, VTS services are or will be integrated into the curriculum design, for example, through setting up core learning activities and assessments, the majority of institutions said that this is indeed happening in some disciplinary areas confirming that virtual teaching spaces are turning into established services and become integrated into the existing institutional offering. So through integrating the services into the curriculum, many institutions, including libraries, aspire to engage more efficiently with large cohorts of users, especially students at an early stage in their studies. These digital access and interaction through virtual teaching space services may also make a special collection and archive material more appealing to groups of students who are comfortable with digital learning and work and who may not normally come to the reading room in person to consult these resources. Moreover, the potential for remote learning across national boundaries with equal access to materials for all students was recognized by many survey respondents. So now I would like to move to some of the findings of our um, last survey aiming to explore academic experience and perceptions of virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces. So in the survey, we had uh, 38 participants and regarding their profiles, uh, these were uh, academics at different career, career levels, uh, as well as other researchers and students. And it is worth noting that they were coming mainly from the humanities and cultural heritage disciplines, including the digital humanities. And at the time of completing the survey, um, these were based mainly in the UK, but also in South Africa, Canada, Europe, New Zealand, and the US. And most were based in higher education institutions. However, we had two participants who were based in museums and a few uh, who were also uh, independent researchers. When asked about whether they had ever used VRR services, the majority said that they had not used them before. However, almost half of participants were interested in VRRs, either through previous experience or for future use. Through asking them to elaborate further, we learned that the main reason for not using VRRs 
was the fact that they were unaware of the services. Considering those who had previous experience of using virtual waiting rooms, it was great to learn that they had overall really positive experiences. We also asked participants about how they found out about the ERA services and to the results, the key role that the library and its staff play in raising awareness about the services became apparent. So regarding the reasons they were using the services, this were mainly for reference checking and to confirm document contents or relevance. Other popular reasons included to conduct original research when it was not possible to visit in person, to conduct a preliminary survey of material in advance for an in-person visit, and to seek advice and knowledge from library and archive professionals. Thinking about the context within which survey participants had used PR services, the majority of those who responded to this question said that they used them as part of a research project, while some had used them as part of postgraduate teaching or as part of a course or module. Regarding the type of material most frequently consulted, this was archival material. So this slide, uh, slide includes some of the user-perceived benefits, which are the key selling points for the services that institutions can use to promote them, but also some areas for improvement and feedback. So regarding the advantages of virtual reading rooms, as noted by users, this includes the fact that they can provide quick and reliable access to material that is not digitized or cataloged in detail, and that they offer the opportunity to consult an item when it is difficult or expensive to visit in person. Also, the environmentally friendly experience they can offer was found to be of importance to most participants in this study. The opportunity to zoom in and view details which may be difficult to see with the naked eye was also of value to some. And the other advantage can be the fact that they can contribute towards increased student experience. In some examples, students were motivated to learn more about collections after having a VRR experience. Finally, they provide the opportunity to collaborate and network with library staff, an opportunity that several scholars appreciate. On the other hand, some found that the length of the session was not suitable for them, often meaning that uh, this was too short, well, while others experienced some delays in getting appointments and that had to some extent affected their experience. I commonly refer to the fact that there is sometimes a lack of flexibility in flipping backwards and forwards, whereas another user mentioned that it was not always possible for them to see the material as clearly as during an in-person visit. The suitability of a VRR as a medium through which to read long text was also debated. More specifically, a need was identified for more guidance on the types of materials that can be best consulted by virtual reading room services. The curators and the quotation of a research project and its goals, as well as the materials that might be of interest to the user, sometimes was also uh, of, of concern. However, in this case, I would like to note that, as we know from uh, our two previous uh, surveys, library staff often devote a lot of time to preparing for those sessions, sometimes for conducting research on the topic of, user of the user's area. So it may be that uh, more clarity and transparency around what preparing for and delivering a VR session entails will give more confidence to some users. And finally, focusing on how VR sessions can be more inclusive through taking into consideration the needs of certain groups of disabled users, such as the hearing impaired, will certainly improve the services and increase their impact. At the moment, VRS and VTSs become increasingly integrated into the existing service offering of institutions, and current discussions within the library community focus on their sustainability and further development. For example, in Australia, there are discussions about collaborating with First Nations communities and digitizing and making accessible relevant content in collections, while in the US, discussions have been conducted around the use of VRS for repatriation to tribal groups. In this paper, I propose that virtual reading rooms and virtual ticking spaces can be pathways to collaboration between library staff and the age researchers. Through presenting the findings of these RLDK studies, especially the one highlighting the perceptions and the use of VRRs by academics and researchers, the more apparent benefits that VRRs and DTSs can offer to researchers that become evident. And this can range from quick, reliable, and low cost access to material that is not digitized or cataloged in detail to the opportunity to network and work closely with library staff. As one participant mentioned, VRRs can allow access to rare, restricted, and fragile materials that cannot form normally be handled by readers. It can allow access to geographically distant collections which saves on or entirely cuts the financial time and carbon costs of travel. In this way, it can also function as an adjustment for disability. For the final part of this presentation, I would like to say a few more things about what VRRs and DTSs can offer to the researchers beyond these more obvious benefits, but also how using the services can contribute towards their sustainability. So research libraries are currently considering opportunities to use virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces to provide access to collections beyond the traditional special collection and archive materials. 
For example, some institutions are planning to add both digital material to the collection types to be offered for consultation. Email archives, audiovisual collections, including video games and any other material that cannot be easily transmitted traditionally, are considered good candidates for sharing through VRRs and VTSs. However, at the moment, the library community is working on how this can be done uh, efficiently. Securing access to this type of material, some of which may not be easily accessible through more traditional routes, can lead to innovative research, project and research projects and collaborations. If used in the context of teaching through the virtual, hybrid and blended sessions that many institutions offer, it can also contribute towards an enhanced student experience. According to one participant, often quote, seeing five copies of the Gutenberg Bible along with other material printed by Gutenberg was not just a once in a lifetime chance. It was something that few, if any, besides a tiny number of the most elite experts have been able to access. This research-led specialist module would not have been possible without a virtual teaching space, and I plan to undertake others that make use of VTS in this way. Close quote. Additionally, comments by some researchers reveal the innovative and creative possibilities through which VRRs can enhance research and teaching. For example, one participant expressed their interest in mixing traditional object handling with VR sessions as part of their teaching practice to increase student experience. Another argued about the potential of the VR process to become part of artistic research, such as the featuring with a live or screen performance that focuses on archives and collections, or practice-led research employing virtual and augmented reality technologies. Beyond that, the possibility of reuniting collections, uh, which may not be available digitally, from different institutions virtually through VRRs can offer unique opportunities for researchers to enable the generation of ideas for new projects, fostering international collaboration and inspiring students. It can also enable PH researchers to ask interesting questions such as about the materiality of cultural heritage objects and the role of the digital medium. Finally, it is worth noting that PRS and DTSs were considered by researchers and other users um, were recognized by researchers and other users for their positive impact on the environment through limiting the need to travel, as well as the inclusive nature, which are both areas of interest for the library and the aid communities at the moment. So, on the other hand, most libraries are interested in expanding the audiences of their collections, and PRS and DTSs provide the opportunity to engage with researchers and students, as well as other communities from across the globe. Digital humanities researchers as a user group are of particular interest to libraries given the technologically innovative and impactful projects that are often produced and which are frequently based on material found in library and other cultural, cultural heritage collections. Indeed, in the past, collaboration between library professionals and the age scholars has produced exciting projects and contributed to innovation in both the digital humanities and library fields. Yet, besides expanding our knowledge about collection holdings, which may not have been examined extensively before, given that most of the material consulted through remote technologies is not available digitally, researchers can have the opportunity to contribute towards informing, informing digitization and other institutional processes, as well as the creation of digital humanities resources and tools. Based on our findings, engagement with researchers, the VRRs and DTSs, has often influenced the operations within libraries. For example, VRRs can be pathways to digitization and feedback received during sessions can inform related policies. Another potential development currently considered by library professionals is taking advantage of other features of video conferencing, which have not been used yet in the context of delivering VRR and DTS sessions, with the aim of knowledge creation and sharing. For example, some staff members reported making annotations to the software, but this capability has not been enabled for users yet. So, if researchers could control Zoom and other annotations, it could provide an extra layer of engagement and turn this to a collaborative tool with interesting implications for research. Additionally, an area of interest for many library professionals currently is to showcase the active role that libraries can play in research and the delivery of VRRs and DTSs require library staff to actively contribute as research assistants or partners. More specifically, several of the participants argued that they are becoming directly involved in the research process in a number of ways by preparing for the session and conducting their own research on the topic or material to be consulted, by pointing at the details in collection items and conversing and interacting with researchers about their projects, both the content, size and handwriting in material, or by recommending other related materials and repositories. Hence, the responsibilities that staff members have during the delivery of their sessions are much more complex compared to the process followed during a usual in-person visit to a reading room, which simply entails retrieving and delivering material for researchers. 
Even though this activity can lead to the development of a close relationship with users and result in interest in collaboration, it should be noted that developing and running the RLVTS services is labor and resource, resource intensive, especially since physical operations have restarted. This additional effort put by staff, which sometimes goes beyond their traditional duties, uh, became evident through the comments of participants across all three studies. For example, one respondent working in a collection holding institution noted, open quote, it changes the role in the delivery process. Staff not just handing over material, they may be asked about content, size, and they have to tackle handwriting with their researcher. They could potentially be drawn into a much more advisory role, close quote. A researcher, a researcher also acknowledged this in their response. Open quote. I was aware that my use of a VRR plays significant time demands on curators. Both times I've used the VRR, I've been aware that it takes far longer for the curator because it must prepare the items, possibly check with, check with conservation, etc. And this adds up. Close quote. Thus, it's important that users benefiting from the services act as champions. This can be particularly important for libraries when advocating for more support and resources internally and externally, something which can contribute towards sustainability. If engaged in collaborative projects instigated by remote technologies, the PH researchers can help their library colleagues in getting more information about this work, which can bring more resources to the library. Just to finish, I would like to say a few things about the group uh, within which the collaborative discussions on this topic took place. And since November 2021, Avalu Geek and the IR Lab Virtual Reading Room Working Room, a group of international stakeholders, which are also members of the International Alliance of Research Library Associations. And the discussions have focused on the development and delivery of services and explored of VRR and VTS services and explored a range of issues from skills development to the identification of common standards to support interoperability between VRRs. Our European collaboration with IARLA partners led the organization and delivery of an international sprint relay symposium with the title Creating Community Driven Toolkit for the Development and Delivery of Virtual Reading Room Services. And you can access um, uh, the toolkit, which is um, openly available to everyone through, this, uh, through the link in this slide or the QR code. And, and next steps as part of this work include the launch of an international di directory of VRRs. Uh, to raise awareness among the research uh, community and to focus discussions on sustainability of VRS and DTSs, including discussing issues around copyright and licensing, as well as um, uh, issues around the framework, frameworks and best practice. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm looking forward to your questions.